Christmas. It was a crisp winter day and Berry the snail and Dolly the ladybird went into the woods to look for a bunch of Christmas greenery. Look Berry, this little tree got knocked over in the storm. Let's take it home. We can decorate it for Christmas. Hooray! We'll have a real Christmas tree, Berry shouted. They lifted the tree up and saw a centipede sheltering under its branches. Help me, Berry. Let's put him on the sledge. He's hurt himself and looks very cold. We can take him to my house. They lifted the centipede carefully onto the sledge. Will he be all right? Berry worried. Of course he will, Dolly reassured her friend. When they got home, they put the poorly centipede to bed. Dolly made him hot tea and Berry read him caterpillar stories from a storybook. Next morning, the centipede opened his eyes and smiled a little smile. He got better every day and soon he was healthy again. Dolly asked him to stay. You're so nice. Don't go, centipede. Spend Christmas with us. Well, thank you. I'd love to stay. But what should we get him for Christmas? Dolly wondered. What would make a centipede happy? Dolly told him her idea. The little snail nodded excitedly. Berry and Dolly went to see the ants. The queen ant welcomed them with open arms. Dolly told them what kind of present she thought of. We can make anything you want, said the queen. Christmas came and Berry and Dolly made a tree stand. As night fell, Berry gave Dolly her present. Merry Christmas, Dolly. Thank you, Berry, the ladybird said. She was delighted. It's beautiful. Dolly was very happy and wound the pretty ribbon around the tree. Merry Christmas to you too, Dolly said, and handed Berry his present. Sparklers, super, let's put them on the tree. They lit the sparklers and crackling sparks danced around the Christmas tree. The glittering light attracted lots of tiny fireflies and each brought a Christmas decoration. Even the centipede helped to trim the tree. Soon the ants arrived carrying a parcel. They handed it to Berry and Dolly. This is our present to you, centipede, Berry said to him. Merry Christmas. Boots, he shouted happily. They'll keep your little feet warm when you're walking in the snow, Dolly explained. The friends' celebrations went on late into the night. There was Eddie the potato beetle, Stanley the stag beetle, Alfonso the cricket and Rosita the rose beetle. The fireflies built a big snowman with the little ants. They all sang and danced around the Christmas tree. Flutter the butterfly came to celebrate with them. Zephyr the dragonfly danced with Leapy the grasshopper. Berry and Dolly skipped around with Balthazar the bee. When the party was over, the centipede cleaned his boots and put them on a shelf. What a wonderful day I've had. It's a shame that Christmas only comes once a year. Today. The Carnival Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. 
It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the Butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the potato beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion, Eddie was a chef, and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil, and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier, and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly, Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry, but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed, and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for Boys, I had a lovely princess dress, but the wind blew it away. We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said. A sun costume. Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you, Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night? Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Mushroom's Cat Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Flutter, Stanley and Bubble all set off for a long walk in the woods. They were strolling happily along when they heard someone crying. It's coming from behind that bush, Berry whispered to the others. They saw a little mushroom crying and he looked odd because he didn't have a cap. Who took your cap? Dolly asked in her kindest voice. 
I don't know. It was missing when I woke up this morning. Don't worry, we'll help you. We'll find you another cap. Berry reassured the miserable mushroom. The friends all ran back to their houses and returned carrying all kinds of different caps and hats. We've brought some new hats to try, they said, and tried them all on the mushroom's head in turn. Dolly put her dotted hat on him first, but it didn't seem to suit the mushroom at all. Then Flutter put her witch's hat on his head. But I don't want to be a nasty witch, the mushroom grumbled. Then Bubble produced a yellow baseball cap, but it was too small. Berry was next to try. I've brought two hats. This is my gardening hat and this is my devil's hat. The gardening hat looked funny on the mushroom's head, but he wasn't happy. I don't like this one, he said in a sullen voice. The devil's hat made him even angrier. I'm not a little devil, you know, he shouted with a red face. But he got most upset when Balthazar showed him the red saucepan. But this is a saucepan. I can't go around with a silly saucepan. It's not a normal saucepan, Balthazar replied sharply. It's our snowman's hat. The last one to try was Stanley the Stag Beetle, who had brought a top hat for the mushroom. Oh, I quite like the look of this one, the mushroom enthused. But can't you find my old cap? That's the one I want to wear the most. So the forest friends started to search for the mushroom's spotty cap. Three canary chicks suddenly flew by. We know where the mushroom's cap is. We saw three woodworms using it for a rowing boat. Everyone down to the stream, Dolly shouted. And sure enough, three woodworms were singing and rowing along in the mushroom's cap. Give the mushroom his cap back, Berry shouted. But we promised to go visit our friends, the fleas. We need a boat to get to their house. But that's a cap, not a boat. And it belongs to the mushroom. Give it back to him, Berry argued. The woodworms eventually gave in and gave the cap back. But how will we go and see the fleas now? They asked sadly. We can take you. We're flying to the little island. The three canary chicks twittered. Hooray! We're going to fly! The woodworm shouted and jumped for joy. But we have to take the mushroom his cap back first. <laughs> you mean the boat? <laughs> the naughty woodworms chuckled. But Dolly gave them one of her serious looks and they stopped laughing. The mushroom said with a big smile as he put it on his head. It fits just perfectly. The woodworms hopped onto the canary's backs. Have a safe trip, the mushroom shouted. Enjoy the flight, the others added. The forest friends all said a final goodbye to the mushroom and walked home with their hats on their heads. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Alfonso's Fiddle One autumn day, Alfonso the Cricket stood happily playing his fiddle in the mushroom field. The forest friends were all enjoying the lovely music. The little ants were playing football on the hill. But, oh dear, the ball bounced away and knocked the fiddle clean out of Alfonso's hands. Alfonso <laughs> shouted in horror. My fiddle! My fiddle's broken! And then he burst into tears. He was sobbing so loudly that everyone came to see what the fuss was all about. Alfonso pointed angrily at the spotty ball. That ball! That ball is to blame! And those naughty ants! Where am I going to get a fiddle from now? He picked his broken fiddle up, went into his house and slammed the door shut behind him. 
Alfonso, Alfonso, come out. I'm sure we can help you, Berry pleaded. But Alfonso didn't want to see anybody. His friends sat sadly in the mushroom field and didn't know what to do. Then Dolly had an idea. I know. Let's make Alfonso a new fiddle. Yes, let's make a new fiddle, Flutter the butterfly nodded. I know who can help us. We have to find Charlie the click beetle. He made Alfonso's first fiddle. The band of friends set off and walked and walked until they reached a blue house. They knocked on the door. A tiny, timid beetle popped his head out. He wore a blue hat and had beautiful dark blue wings. Who are you? he asked. Dolly told Charlie the whole story. Oh, but don't be sad. If that's your problem, I'm happy to help. Alfonso will be playing music on his new fiddle in no time at all. The click beetle gave everybody a job to do. Some collected wood for the body of the fiddle, while others gathered grass for the strings. Now he had everything he needed, Charlie got to work. He sawed, sanded, polished and waxed. And then, like a little miracle, the new fiddle was ready. Can I try it? Dolly asked. No, it's Alfonso's instrument, Flutter told her. But I want to have my own musical instrument, Dolly sulked. Me too, me too, the little ants shouted. Quiet, said Charlie. Why don't you all start an orchestra? A great big orchestra. Like a music band? And everybody could have their own instrument? That's a very good idea. The first thing they made was a harp for Dolly. Stanley the stag beetle got a double bass and Eddie the potato beetle had a cello. Berry made a trumpet out of a lily. Morris the Maybug made a horn from a honeysuckle flower. The big spider used horse chestnuts and acorns for drums, while Zephyr and Leapy made cymbals out of pebbles. Charlie carved flutes from birch twigs for the ants. Flutter the Butterfly got a lute, and Balthazar the Bee got a zither. Bubble the baby beetle played a triangle. They all had a quick practice and then headed for Alfonso's house. Alfonso heard the music and looked out of his window to see where it was coming from. He was surprised by what he saw. Please, Alfonso, the little ant began. Don't be mad at us for breaking your fiddle. We'd like you to have this new one as a present. Charlie made it. Alfonso began to play straight away and the sound of his fiddle filled the forest once more. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The hot air balloon. One summer afternoon, a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly, someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the Oil Beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. 
My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The oil beetle sniffled. They lifted Odette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Odette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready, said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. <laughs>